Welcome back to another episode of Andrew Reviews. I'm your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Back in April 2019, I did a poorly made review of the Famicom port of Taito's The Legend of Kage, a game all about ninjas. In said review, I briefly listed off a number of other video game ninja heroes from the 80s and 90s, and one said hero was young Jajamaru, the star of the 1985 Famicom gem, Ninja Jajamaru. Ninja Jajamaru is particularly worth noting, as it's a game that I adore and consider to be one of my favorites from the pre-1986 Famicom era, and I'm very glad that I finally get to review it and explain why I love it so much. So join me as we take a look at Ninja Jajamaru for the Nintendo Famicom. Ninja Jajamaru is actually a home console follow-up to a 1984 arcade game developed and released by UPL called Ninja-kun Demon Castle Adventure. The game involved young ninja Kun scaling up and down platforms and fighting off evil ninjas using throwing stars. It was ported to various formats, including a Famicom version developed by Tosei and polished by Jalico in May of 1985. It was decided for whatever reason to follow up that game with a home console exclusive spin-off starring Ninja Kun's younger brother, Jajamaru. This follow-up would include the same basic elements from the original game, but also add in some new mechanics to make it something much better. Ninja Jajamaru was published for the Nintendo Famicom in November of 1985, with an arcade version running on Nintendo's Versus System hardware releasing around the same time, and a subsequent MSX version releasing the following year. The game was successful and popular enough for Jajamaru to get his own series alongside that of his brother, with one of his games even getting a Western release. The original Ninja Jajamaru, however, would remain a Japanese exclusive until it got a proper North American and European release on the Wii Virtual Console in 2007. On a personal side note, the Virtual Console was how I was first introduced to Ninja Jajamaru, but I didn't actually bother playing it for myself until 2016 when I got the Retrobit Generations. Don't get the Retrobit Generations, by the way, it's a piece of crap. Nowadays, as you can see, I own an original Famicom cartridge of the game, which I got for only just five bucks at ABGC 2019, an event that I will forever cherish in my heart. And I will be using this cartridge for this review. Now, if you want to play the game yourself, unless you're willing to import the recent Ninja Jajamaru collection for Nintendo Switch, you're gonna have to either get an original copy like I did, which shouldn't cost you too much, or emulate the game if you can't play Famicom games. But without further ado, let's review Ninja Jajamaru. Ninja Jajamaru is a fairly simple arcade-style action platforming game. You control Jajamaru, who's on a mission to rescue Princess Sakura from the sinister Namazudayu. You play through a series of scenes, each with the goal of defeating the eight enemies stationed throughout. Jajamaru can attack by throwing ninja stars, and you can also collect the Tamashi of a defeated enemy, or hit a falling defeated enemy with another ninja star for extra points. Each scene is arranged in a series of ceilings with breakable sections throughout each. Jajamaru can jump into these sections to break them open and reach higher floors, and some of these sections have items inside, which I'll touch upon in a bit. Each scene also has a time limit, and when it's close to running out, Namazu will run left and right dropping down bombs in an attempt to kill Jajamaru. Namazu isn't the only one who does any sort of dropping in this game, as the princess will occasionally drop flower petals for Jajamaru to catch, kinda like how olive oil drops hearts for Popeye to catch in the arcade Popeye game from Nintendo. It's important to catch these petals, as catching three of them will allow you to play a bonus stage after you complete the scene. The bonus stage has you squaring off against Namazu, who rapidly throws down flames at Jajamaru, who must throw ninja stars upwards and hit Namazu before time runs out. If you're successful, you earn a large bonus and rescue the princess, though the game does continue on afterwards. As mentioned earlier, some of the breakable sections of the ceiling contain important items. The tram car allows you to take out enemies by simply ramming into them. The speedball increases the speed at which you move, obviously. The medicine bottle turns you transparent and renders you invulnerable to enemy attacks for a brief period of time. The red ninja star extends the range of your ninja stars to half the length of the screen. The silver and gold coins net you a nice bonus, and the doll earns you an extra life. Though please be careful, as some sections contain a pair of bombs that can kill you by simply touching them. Thankfully, they'll disappear when you break a different section or wait for them to explode. Collecting the items is an important strategy in playing this game, not only because they help you in combat and get you some extra points, but also because they're key to unlocking Jajamaru's ultimate ninja technique. 
Collecting the speed ball, the medicine bottle, and the red ninja star, or alternatively, collecting four of the dolls, will allow Judge Amaru to summon the giant frog Gamapakun and ride him around the scene, eating up any enemies that get in your way. Very impressive stuff. Being a game about ninjas in ancient Japan, Ninja Jajimaru's art style and visuals most definitely accommodate that. The different background assets, the messages introducing new enemies before certain levels, hell, even the point markers are written in kanji numbers rather than the standard Hindu-Arabic numeral system that you and I are familiar with. Tose really knew what they were doing with this game's visuals, and I commend them for that. It's not just the visuals either. The game's music is in a traditional Japanese style, very fitting for what it's going for, and it's just very fun to listen to. Now, of course, the music isn't dynamic and epic like Super Dodgeball or Super Mario Bros. 3, but considering that this is an arcade-style Famicom game from 1985, it doesn't really need to be that. All that the music in a game like this really needs to be is really catchy and really fun, and Ninja Jajamaro's music definitely gets that job done. If you couldn't tell already, I feel the game itself is great fun. Not the best thing in the world, but still great fun nonetheless. For a game made for a 256 kilobit ROM cartridge in 1985, it's pretty cool what Tosei put into it. The horizontal scrolling is a particular note because despite it being somewhat choppy, it works well and is quite impressive. On a side note, the scrolling in this game is pretty much like the scrolling in another Jalico published 1985 Famicom title City Connection, which I also am fond of and enjoy playing from time to time. Coincidentally enough, these two games really tend to show up together quite often in re-releases too, but I digress. My thoughts on the scrolling also pretty much sum up how I generally feel about Ninja Jajimaru. It's somewhat unpolished and quirky, yet still feels smooth and is still fun to play. The scrolling's jaggedness can sometimes be somewhat of a detriment to the player, and there are other quirks like the fact that you have to move out of the way of where an enemy died before their Tamashi appears for you to collect. Yet the game doesn't feel completely broken and feels just right. It still manages to work and provide a fun challenge, which I find is the true beauty of the game. Being a game about points and stuff, the game also provides a pretty good amount of opportunities to score big. Besides the bonuses I mentioned before, there's stuff like the 10,000 point bonus you get for completing a scene without throwing more than 8 ninja stars, and the bonus in scene 7 involving jumping into the princess, which gets you a whopping 257,000 points. Now that's a secret bonus. I haven't even touched upon the core mechanics of the game itself. Unlike most games of its time, and just like its predecessor, touching your enemies in Ninja Jajamaru doesn't actually kill you. In fact, it only stuns you, though while still leaving you vulnerable is still quite merciful for a game of its type. Not to mention, the enemies can also be stunned, either by them falling through a ceiling, or you landing or jumping on top of them. Being able to stun your enemies is quite helpful when you're trying to defeat them, and some enemies in later stages require you to stun them in order to defeat them. I also just really like the system involving the items in Gamapakun. It truly adds something to the gameplay to make it something more than your average Destroy them all. sort of affair customary of the time. And really, you just gotta love Gamapakun. He's a giant frog for Christ's sake. What more could you want from a ninja game? Well, that's pretty much all I have to say about this game. If I haven't made it clear enough already, I really enjoy Ninja Jajamaru. It's very good for a game of its type, and its mechanics make it very much well worth your time. Truly one of the finest experiences that the Famicom had to offer during its heyday, where games usually weren't big and expansive with exceptions like Super Mario Bros. and didn't have that much ROM space to work with. Considering those circumstances, I truly commend Ninja Jajamaru for what it did, and really, it's just a fun game. And isn't that what we want from a game? To have fun? That's what I want anyway. And that's why Ninja Jajumaru gets an approval from me. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I hope to see you next time for my next review or whatever other video I decide to put out next. And as always, thank you everybody for watching. I'm Andrew Ambrose, and I'll catch you later.